Hello, I'm Chris Bowser. We're going to be talking about salinity on the Hudson River. The lower Hudson is an estuary, meaning there are freshwater inputs from rain and snow in the watershed, but there's also a strong saltwater input from the tides of the Atlantic Ocean. Salinity, or the amount of salt that's dissolved in the water, directly affects and determines what species of plants and animals live in a given section of the river. We can measure salinity using a few different methods and in a couple of different units. For example, in the ocean, full salt water is usually measured at about 35 parts per thousand in the Atlantic. Whereas in freshwater, salt is so dilute we usually measure that in parts per million or milligrams per liter of chlorides. One term you might hear is salt front, which is the leading edge of dilute seawater, or about 100 milligrams per liter of chlorides. Most summers that salt front might be up around Newburgh or Poughkeepsie, but in the spring, with a lot of snow melt, that salt front will push far to the south. That means that animals that live here in the Hudson River have to live in a very dynamic ecosystem. My friends and I are going to go over three different methods of measuring salinity. Hydrometers and refractometers are great options for saltwater and brackish water habitats of the lower Hudson and New York Harbor. In freshwater parts of the Hudson, as well as tributaries, I suggest Quantabs. Let's go measure some salt. So this device I have here is called a refractometer. It's used to measure salinity for, for uh, different waters. We're going to be using it today to measure brackish water. How this works is light would refract through a thin layer of the water and you'd be able to, and it gives us a value on these scales. We'll be focusing on the salinity one. You would want to rinse it off first with the water that you are going to be testing. This would make sure that any dirt or dried salt is rinsed off and won't contaminate your sample. And you would add two drops, one or two drops, and seal this tray over it. And you really want to make sure it's closed on. Then you would point this in the direction of a light source. When we look, when we look through the refractometer, what we see is a, a setup similar to this, where one scale is going to um, have the salinity value in parts per thousand, where the right in between the blue and the white is going to be our value, which was 12 parts per thousand. The reading we got from the refractometer was 12 parts per thousand, and that would be typical of brackish water found in the lower Hudson River. It's not, it's not as salty as seawater, which the salinity would be around 35 parts per thousand. And it's still too salty to be considered fresh water, which would be almost zero. So today we're going to start off measuring salinity by using a hydrometer, this little plastic instrument which can be found at any local pet store. It's pretty cheap. So first we're going to dip it into this water and figure out how much salt is in it. And you want to wait for all the bubbles to stop. And then gently take it out and tap it. So what we have today is about 24, 25 parts per thousand measuring salinity. So it's not exactly ocean water, but it's not exactly brackish water either. And so this type of water you would typically find in a spot such as the New York Harbor. And this oyster toadfish is also one of New York Harbor species. And he looks kind of scary, but he's really not. He has like a really nice outer skin and eyes that do look like a toad. And he often burps up water. And he's pretty good at camouflaging amongst seaweed or rocks. Now we're going to use a different device, little titrator strips called Quantabs, that will measure the salinity or the chlorides in fresh water or water that's nearly fresh. This is great for measuring very low levels of chlorides that you might find in tributaries of the Hudson or the upper Hudson River. We're going to take out one of these little Quantab strips and we're going to be very careful to hold it at the very, very top above the numbers. And what I'm going to do is, Michelle, can you take a little bit of fresh river water and just put about a quarter inch in this Petri dish here. Okay, that's perfect. Now, Martise, grab just the top of that Quantab, and I want you to put that in the Petri dish so that the bottom is in the water, but make sure that that yellow strip is out of the water. 
right? You should be able to lean that right in there. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wait. And while we wait, what we're going to notice is at the bottom of that scale, there's going to be a little white triangle start to develop. We're just going to let that little white triangle do its thing until this yellow strip at the top here turns dark, dark brown. It may take a few minutes, so we'll just set this up. And if you don't have a Petri dish, it'd be fine to use a little plastic cup or anything else as long as the bottom is in the water, but the top is completely dry. Now our Quantap strip, it's taken five or ten minutes, but that little yellow stripe has now turned a dark blue, almost black, which means the reaction is done. So Michelle, pick up that Quantab and tell us that little white triangle at the bottom, what number does that go up to? 1.8. 1.8. Now Martis, on our bottle, there's a label. Find out what does 1.8 mean? Uh, 1.8, that means 51 parts per million chlorides. 51 parts per million of chloride. So first of all, we're not measuring total salinity the way we were doing with the hydrometer and the refractometer. We're measuring a significant part of salinity, which is chlorides. Um, the other thing is that your unit of measurements was what? Parts per million. Parts per million. Michelle, when we were looking at brackish and salt water, what unit of measurement were we using? Parts per thousand. Parts per thousand. So the salinity, 51 parts per million in fresh water, is much, 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 much lower. It's really a very, very small amount of chlorides that, are, that is in freshwater tributaries and even in the upper Hudson. Now, why would there be a little bit of salt in the uh, upper Hudson? Well, when... Uh when it rains, it can wash off a lot of salt from rocks and the ground into the uh, streams and they lead into the river. So there's a little bit of salt that naturally occurs throughout the watershed that gets washed in. Michelle, can you think of any other reason why the salt might be entering tributaries in the Hudson? A lot of people use road salt to help take ice down. Absolutely. So salted roads are going to add chlorides as well. The three methods we just went over are also available online as instruction sheets as part of our Day in the Life of the Hudson River resources. Remember to record your units and whichever method you use. Salinity is one of the most important and dynamic parameters on the estuary. Thanks for watching.